Oh yeah. It's totally f***ed. Oh yeah, I think it just locked up. Well, it sounded like it was kind of going to clear up, so I gave it a little bit, you know? And then I shut it off, and now it won't spin back over. All right, so last time we were at this machine, uh, I basically shut it off, and it stopped spinning, like, immediately. Um, so now I used to be able to come in here and roll it over. Make sure you don't bump it. And now I believe... Well, it actually feels okay today. So there's two things. It could have either A, finally bit the dust and locked up, or B, it could actually have an overheating issue and that could be our whole problem with it. It could have gotten hot. So Will? Oh, I unhooked the battery. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, that does not sound good though, does it? No. She's got oil? It's got oil, yeah, it's full of oil. But that noise could be from external of the motor, too. No, it's not. <laughs> wow. You hear that? Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? That sounded more like a pop. That didn't sound like no rod knock to me. It would have been knocking right away. Go ahead. Let her up. Fire that. Well, that sounds awful. I know. She's smoking. Go ahead. That sounds awful. The motor, you don't think? No. Roll it over. Uh, I don't hear no knock. Yeah. Let me give it some ether. Oh yeah, she's got some kind of knock. Sounds like a diesel knock to me, not a knock. Well, that didn't Man, really. Look at that oil pressure, it held, and it's, it was in the green. Okay, I wouldn't mind cracking the injectors now. Yeah. That number six is uh yep. is what, dead. Whatever's going on with number six is the noise is coming from the back of the engine, I believe. Yeah, all right. Yeah, he loosened the bleeder up to number six, so it basically inactivated that cylinder yep. and there was no difference in the way it ran. Yep. Nope. So now we're gonna take off the uh it just had less smoke. It just had less smoke. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cylinder's dead. Cylinder's dead. All right, we got it set to go. We're popping off that valve cover. Now number six cylinder is dead because we put a new injector in it. Didn't make any difference. We cracked it both times. It makes no difference in the way it runs. Is there something wrong on the top end or the bottom end? Right there. Well, oh boy. What do we see? Everything. Everything appears to be... push rods in there? Everything appears to be fine? Kind of appears to I'm be... I'm going to reach uh, over and touch them push rods. Oh, there's some clearance. Okay, well... <laughs> Is there clearance there now? Yep. Oh, wow. Man, everything looks okay there, doesn't it? Clearance there. Just watch all the other valves when you roll it over. That's what I'm going to do right now. Ah, I hear that hitting. What is it? 
see it. Every time. Well, every every time that valve goes down, it makes a noise. Yeah. Like, bam, bam, oh, bam. Do, do that again. Let's watch. That, that very last one. <laughs> How else, what else can it be? But the thing is, even with a bad rod bearing, it wouldn't matter. The cylinder wouldn't be dead unless you right, know, well, right. it would slam into the head and bend the valve. If one of the valves is bent. Well, if, bent, if the rod yeah. bearing was out, yeah. you know, then it would extend up into the head and it could bend the valve. Yeah. Which yeah. is highly unlikely. Yeah. There's no oil on any of those, on any of the exhaust valves. I don't know. You see that? I don't know why there's no uh, oil running across the other rockers. Even on that little one over here, there's barely any oil. Boy, she sounds rough. That, that I think he's got to pull the head off next. Yeah, the head, the head's gonna be next. All right, so you guys have seen us use this pop tester before on the case and we're Wait. trying to figure out if we actually do have a bad injector for a fuel knock in the cap. So watch this build up some pressure. Your arm might be in the way. And it's not, see that? It's like 500 PSI and it's not misting. It's literally just squirting out there. So I've got three injectors here. From the other machine. Someone said that these were notoriously unreliable injectors. Boy, that's the same. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah, I mean, there's no pop. It is an indirect injection engine. But the injector also could just be kind of stuck, you know? Whoops. Boy, those are hard to get in there. That one's a little better. Well, how how is this supposed to work? I think it's supposed to miss, but probably not as big as the other ones. Let's go. Well, that's hardly. Pull a couple more off the head. All right, so this one, we've went through five and they're all garbage. What? 500 PSI still. But at least it's popping. Look at the mist, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Rather than the other ones. And they could just be stuck too. People said that these are like notoriously unreliable injectors um, and they stick. People said run some ATF through it. But this one right here is the one we want to try. So let's go try it. All right, so we're back. Last thing you saw was we changed the injector and I told him, I said, how do you know the injector you put in there wasn't bad? We didn't have the pop tester. And he said, there's no way two injectors were bad. So we just saw four bad injectors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop that one out and we're gonna test that just to see, and then probably put the good one that we just found back in and see if it is rod knock or not. Yeah, the injector might be bad, but that cylinder, I think, has got still has bigger problems than just an injector. So we'll see. We also have the scope we can put down there to see as well. I dropped that stupid thing. What'd you drop? No How one. many things have you dropped on this? I got it. You got it all. All right, what do you want to do first? You want to pop test it? Yeah, this? let's pop test it. Uh-oh. Well, that's not, that's not what I wanted to see. <laughs> Nuts. So that was a pretty good injector, huh? We'll shoot. All right, well, let's scope that cylinder. Yeah. I know we're bad at it. Mm hmm? They got some fuel on it. I mean, I can't see. I tell you, I can see, huh? Yeah, they got some fuel on it, I think. This is the side. 
Boy, that does not look like crosshatch, does it? Yeah, but I can't. I... That, that looks like oh. scratch. See that? Isn't that a big scratch right there? Oh, okay. Well, there's a little bit of crosshatch, maybe. Tough to say. Yeah, it's really tough to say. Boy, you know. doesn't look. The top of the piston's real shiny. Which is kind of odd, you know. But it doesn't look, I can't tell you it's cracked or anything like that. I mean, it looks normal compared to the other ones. And there's, well, you see that shining back at me? See all yeah. that fuel sitting on the top of the cylinder? Yeah, what's that mean? Uh, I don't, that's a lot of fuel. Why is there so much fuel sitting on the side? Hmm. Or on the top, you know? Mm-hmm. Then if you look at the side... I mean, there's... That doesn't look bad. It's not scuffed up that bad, is it? I mean... Yeah, it's hard A little to bit of a crosshatch left. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's up to you. You want to try that other injector? Let's make Where sure. This one's good. It looks good. I just wonder if maybe if something wasn't tight yeah, or whatever. if that wasn't. And it just was... Because you tight. I don't know if Bill tightened it that tight. All right, so we're going to fire it up. And see if it sounds any different. And then I'll crack that number six injector as well. Uh, let me actually crack this right now. And we'll bleed that out real good. So go ahead, you got the throttle on, right? Uh, yeah. So go ahead and just crack, crank it over a little bit. <laughs> All right, hold up. I'm just getting the fuel. Oh, we got the fuel off back there. Oh, you do? Yeah, we got to turn it on. I got a crescent wrench right here. Yeah, go ahead. number six there and no change at all so cylinder six is dead even though the injector is probably good i'm gonna crack number five now It didn't sound as bad that time, though. Ah, the muffler's off. You can't hear it knocking. I guess we'll see what it sounds like on camera. Well, so we scoped it. We messed with the injectors. I mean, that's proof right there. The injector is okay, um, right? I mean, I don't. They missed it great. The injector looks fine. Yeah, you got I it think tight. It's fine. Fuel system's okay, but cylinder number six is dead. The only thing we didn't do was check the compression, damn it. We forgot yeah. our compression tester. Yeah, so maybe you want to do that next before we tear off the head, do you think? We can. Yeah. Yeah, we couldn't see much with that scope. 
No. Nothing, you know, I didn't see a piston that was in pieces or a rod. And the bore looked fine. It did not sound as bad to me today as it had before. That's for sure. But why is cylinder six completely dead? So one other question I have too is could it be an injection pump issue? So we're running two more tests on it, a compression test, and then we're gonna see if that uh, bank number six in that uh, in that fuel pump is uh, <laughs> is pumping the proper pressure too. We're gonna hook an injector up to that, just a dummy line coming off of there. And, We'll see how that sprays. Go ahead and uh, roll it over. We got it in uh, cylinder one right now. Oh, what, what happened? That? Nothing. Nothing. We're good. Okay, wh uh, where did it stop? 400. 400? Yep, she stopped at 400. Okay. All right, we got it hooked up on cylinder six there. Here we go. She's toast. Well, keep going. Go one more. That's not enough, apparently. Nope. That's it. That can't be enough to run it, apparently. Huh? Well, not only that, there's something damaged in that combustion chamber. Yeah. Hmm. One last test. We pulled out that injector right there, and we're going to see how it fires when we roll it over. Finally got a damn operator up there who knows what the hell's going on today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I think that answers that. That injector seems to be spraying perfectly every time it uh, it's supposed to. The injector's fine. Seems like good pressure. So I think the last thing to do, I I believe, is pull the head, and we'll see what's going on there. Might be a mistake. We'll see. But we're going to try and pull that pre-combustion chamber out. It looks okay what I can see, but to see if there's a crack in it or there's something wrong there. Because people have said that it could be bad or cracked and that might be a problem. I'm skeptical, but here we go. Oh, I'm Look at that, it's coming out. Hmm. Whoa. Antifreeze? I didn't know I was going to get antifreeze. Yeah, oh well. Whoops. Oh, is that going to go? That's probably on top of the piston. There it is. That's the pre-combustion chamber. Shoot. I don't see anything wrong with it. Hmm. 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 All right. Today we're back at the 977 number one, the one with the uh, had the fuel leak and the knot. And today we're going to pull the head off. We've already determined that uh, cylinder number six has low compression and is not firing, but the uh, fuel system is good. The injector's working good, so we're going to see what's uh, what's there when we pop the head off. That one? Why? Yeah. <laughs> what are you up to? What do you do at night? Do crossword puzzles to stimulate yourself? This is what I do at night to stimulate my brain. <laughs> No. I didn't think so. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna snap. 
sneak in here, right through here, Dan. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Wow. It popped, huh? I barely moved it. That ought to lift right off there, huh? It should. Anything else that looks like it's being held? I don't it see it. It don't anything. look like it. Okay, I'm gonna get the boat up. On um, the chain and the bolts are right there. Maybe a hair. Yeah, probably a little bit. All right, go ahead, go up. Pull it. All right, go, go ahead. Uh, come on forward, Bill. All right, I, I think you're good. Just go on up. Man, are we gonna be able to see anything with that? What are we gonna see with that antifreeze? Nothing. We got to... Uh... Dude, don't even look scored. Oh, oh, no, man, I expected to see some scoring. We gotta get the antifreeze out of there, huh? Well, we gotta look at that head underneath there, too. I'm just trying to see if I can feel any scoring, which I don't. Wow. How about how about the other cellars? How do they look? Man, they look good. Man, look at that. There ain't even no ridge, Dan. There ain't no ridge on them. Hmm. Wow, they don't even look scored. So we gotta look at that last the one better. That head's head. gotta be gotta, uh we gotta get the antifreeze out of that last one too and see. You know, no, uh, no burnt heat rings on the head gasket at all. Sometimes they're burnt right out. Who knows where it went through? Maybe it's got some broken rings. It could. So there's number six, the top of the piston. We tried to tell Tyler he wouldn't listen, though. No, he won't listen he to won't the old listen. guys. No, 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 no. You can see that piston was hitting the top of the head. It's amazing how the valves don't look like they were hitting. So why'd they have low compression? Maybe the rings were getting pinched who knows well i'll tell you right now the only reason that a piston will hit the head like that is if the rod bearing's gone yeah. or the rod miraculously stretched something but, or, yeah. or, or, the, or the wrist pin's gone but i believe the bottom end of the rod and the wrist pin's probably both bad i don't know how but yeah, the bore doesn't look that horrible, surprisingly. I, I just don't know why it wouldn't fire, though. That's that's just beyond me. Yeah, with 300 pounds of pressure, just not enough, apparently. Maybe it just wasn't enough to fire. Yeah. Oh, not that much. I know. Dang. Go back up. Wow. How can we... That's surprising. It looks like it was only, like, like that Eighth much. But you inch. know what? That That's a lot of compression, Dan. How can we... Uh... That, that's how you're losing your compression. That little bit of mount. See, these are equal right here. See how these are the same? Oh, yeah. So if you brought it all the way up the top dead center... Oh, yeah. And then roll it... it down and see how far that one goes down... Yeah, bring it up the top ...before it moves center. that one. Go slow. Okay, hold it. Go the other way. Right, be right there. You're right there. Okay, oh, you're wow. you're about an eighth of an inch off. Look at the other one. Put your camera. Yep. yep. Put your this. camera on this one, Mark. Right on the, here. On the Real close. That's See this? That's the measurement. See that right there? Yep. And now put your camera on that back there. Wow. That's off almost about about three sixteenths, I'd say, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, maybe between an eighth and three sixteenths. That's all your compression. That's your hundred pounds of compression. Oh, see? Wow, look at that move. Oh, no. Go what ahead, can you... Do that again. Oh, no way. No way, Dan. Yeah, look at that. No way. Wow. So. Oh, yeah, there, there's a quarter oh, inch there. Oh, so now you should be able to push that piston down, Bill. Yeah. Go ahead, can you reach the top? Just a second. 
I got it. Keep your camera right on that, Mark. Okay. Oh, look oh, at that. Did you see that? Wow. You want, did you get it, yeah. you think? Yeah. Wow. You know what, Dan? There's a full quarter of an inch there. That's all the compression that you're missing, man. The other cylinders look good. Yeah. Boy, okay. I hope that crank's okay. Yeah. Man, you need a shop vac and a generator to suck all that crap out of the threads. You still got to get the oil pan off. Yeah. Wow. You know what, though? I think that I think that bottom end's going to be good if that crank's okay. That is amazing. A uh, quarter of an inch. I'd have to say a quarter of an inch. Wow. wow. So that, that piston was literally just pounding on that head. Okay, on that 977 with the bad rod journal, uh, we wanted to get at, uh, it's, it's number six. And uh, it's a two-part oil pan. And there's the back part. We could take that off, but there's frame in the way right here. And uh, that does not unbolt that part of the belly pan. It would be almost impossible to reach up in there and check that out. So I think we're gonna have to pull the motor. 